Jesus. This afternoon, Heavenly Father, we come standing before you to speak unto your people what thus says the Lord. Lord, I pray right now that we are let down into your storehouse of wisdom. Lord, that I would be the instrument that sounds off when you tell me to and shut down when you tell me to. Thank you, Jesus. I pray, Lord, for obedience to your spirit. And I thank you, Lord, for what our ears have seen and our ears have heard and our eyes have seen thus far this morning. Because, Lord, you have ministered unto us through songs and through prayer. And, Lord, if we were paying attention, you have aligned everything this morning. Everything throughout this service until where we are now. Thank you, God. Because you have revealed what you needed to. And I pray, Lord, for this sermon. I pray for my voice. Because I know that the enemy is trying to do something. But I thank you because you are greater than any enemy. I pray, Lord, for the hearers. I pray for the remaining of this service, Lord, that your will will be done. Lord, I love you because you first love me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, why don't you praise God today? church in Rome, God had him inform the world that since Adam came alone, humans have chose to live sinful and fleshly lives. People of Israel tried to obey God and follow the law, but they didn't succeed in their attempt, and many of the children of Israel failed miserably. Let me, let me rephrase that. Just many of us would have failed. And many of us are still failing miserably. God has made it clear in this book of Romans that only the faith in Jesus Christ and Jesus' death and resurrection could justify humanity and fulfill God's promise to create a covenant relationship with his people, the descendants of Abraham. If we look at the book of Romans without giving you such a detailed history lesson, because the book of Romans is is just such a powerful book, it can be broken down into eight distinct outlines. The first would be greetings and introduction. The second would be the overall theme of Romans. God charging us that we are guilty. He us to say that we are guilty. Amen. The third would be the condemnation and the need of God's righteousness Hallelujah. and not of our own. Amen. The fourth would be the justification or the provision of God's righteousness. Amen. The fifth would be the sanctification or the demonstration Hallelujah. of God's righteousness. Amen. The sixth would be restoration and Israel's reception of God's righteousness. The seventh would be the application or the behavior of God's righteousness. And finally, number eight, the conclusion, greeting, and the benediction. But today we will dive into outline number five, which really could be broken down into a multi-series topic of both study and preaching. However, with my limited time before y'all today, I have to keep focus on delivering what I can while I can to you, the listening congregation. So I want to focus on Romans chapter 8, which 
chapter 8, which again can be categorized as a vital part of outline 5, the demonstration of God's righteousness towards us who was unrighteous. I'm going to say that again. I want you to catch that. The demonstration of God's righteousness to us who are unrighteous. God used the Apostle Paul to write this compelling book of Romans as he was inspired by the Holy Spirit to do so. And let it be known that while all scripture, say all, all scripture can certainly resonate with each of you as it does with me, there are a few verses of scripture that does something to me and just stirs me up. I can't, I can't deny there, there's something. It's kind of like when, I, when we was in the world, you know, y'all probably don't know this, but when we was in the world and our soul came home. I know y'all don't know nothing about that, but when we, was, when we was in the world, Julius, and our soul came home, we would say something like, was a few folk out there to know what I'm talking about. Because the rest of y'all had it together. But, it, but it's something that some scriptures do to me that really stirs me up, such as John 3.16. Uh, Ephesians 3, 12 through 21. Philippians the fourth chapter and verse 8. Romans chapter, chapters 5 and 6. And thank you, Holy Spirit. St. John chapters 15, 16, and 17. And then I wind up getting here to Romans chapter 8. It, it, it's to those, those particular passages of scripture does something to me. Because I can see myself in those scriptures. And I can tell you while we were on the cruise, uh, we were on our vacation, I was on the balcony doing some studying and Sister Helm was in the room, and I, I can remember coming back here and saying, boy, this chapter 8. Yeah. Boy, that's just, it's just, it's just doing something, Ebony. That, that chapter 8 was talking to me. Yeah. And, and, and then Pastor Dyer came and preached out of it last week, and it did some more to me, but it's still something in there. Yeah. So we got to get in it, because the clock is ticking. Yeah. I, wanna, I want you to think about our sermon title today. Yeah. Living Life cross eyed. We, we used to, when I was growing up, we always thought that when you was cross eyed, meant that you had one eye. One eye was going one way looking at Kurt and the other eye was somewhere across the street. And, 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 and then we used to say they all cross eyed and it was hard to keep a conversation sometimes when we were kids because you you always focus. You always focus on the eye that wasn't looking at you. I'm just being real. I know y'all probably ain't never felt that way, Nikki, but I'm just, I'm just being real. And, and for some reason, Sister Green, we always seem to focus on that one eye. But in this context, in, in this connotation, in, in this context, we're not talking about a crossed up look physically. We are talking about the cross, and our, our eyes needs to be focused on it. So reason, I want to give you three reasons as to why Christians should do all that we can do to live our lives cross-eyed. Amen. And the reason number one is because God has set us free from indwelling sin. Oh, that was enough to shout about. Right? Yeah. God has set us free. We already heard about being set free, didn't we? Yeah. And the son that set free was free indeed. Uh, those of us who have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior are not condemned to the eternal death of hell and everlasting punishment. Y'all, real quiet on something that you should be celebrating about. Those of us who have accepted Jesus Christ yeah. as our Lord and Savior yes, are not yeah. N-O-T yeah. condemned yeah. to the eternal death yeah. of hell yeah. and everlasting punishment. Yeah. Yeah. As Pastor Dyer, that's right, thank you Jesus, amen. Yeah. Yeah. But as Pastor Dyer alluded to us last week, yeah. you better make sure yeah. that you got Jesus yeah. in your heart 
Because if you walk after the things of the flesh and not after the things of the spirit, you might want to check out your confession. Come on now. Mm, I know, I know, I know, I know. Did you, did, did you just say some words when you got up and said that you professed Jesus? Or did something really happen in your life? Did something make you feel that you had a live connection between Jesus and your inner person? I'm just, I'm just saying lined up with what the word, I'm just saying lined up with what the word says. Amen, amen, it's in there. You, you, can, you can read it for yourself. Uh, did you feel Jesus' power connect with your inner person so that you know that you know that you know that Jesus is a part of you, but more importantly, are you a part of Jesus? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Verse 2. Verse 2 in Romans chapter 8 says, For the law of the spirit of the life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. Mm -hmm. Unto this, in, under this new covenant, yeah. we've got a guaranteed thing. Yeah. Oh yeah, we got a guaranteed yeah. thing, D. Yeah. We got a guaranteed thing in Jesus because we are no longer enslaved by our sin because Jesus has set us free. Yeah. So I ask a yeah. very simple question. Yeah. Why is it? That, that we keep on trying to enslave ourselves yeah. to the sins that we've already been set free from. Yeah. Why, why we do such a thing? Why do we try to go back like a dog and return into the vomit that we've already been set free from? I, I, I like my freedom. I, I've never, never been incarcerated. Never do I have intentions to be incarcerated. Uh, I'm not interested and looking at what it feels like to be incarcerated. Um, but I know that, Sister Green, if I had to be incarcerated, yes, yes. I certainly would quest for my freedom. Yes. And in Jesus, we were already set free. Yes. So we don't have to go to the places of being incarcerated yes. by our sins. Yes. Uh, Pastor Mark Battison from the National Church in Washington, D.C. Yes. Uh, explained it like this. After he recalled a trip uh, when he and his family visited the, the Galapagos Island in the Pacific Ocean. Y'all know I like animals and stuff. And so the Galapagos Islands was way out there, Sister Thorne, in, in the Pacific Ocean. You got to take a long flight to try to get there. And it's, and it's one of those places where the scientists always like to go and study. But him and his family took a trip to the Galapagos Island. And, and they were able to witness firsthand all of these wild marine animals in their own settings. <laughs> they, they were able to, to see all these marine iguanas, Sister Teagle, they, they saw all these big Galapagos turtles that were probably, you know, hundreds of years old and still living every day. But they was huge and they weighed hundreds of pounds and, and they were able to swim with the seals in the water. And then they got back to the States. And he wound up going to the zoo. And, and it struck him as odd that it was just like some Christians. Uh, when he was in Galapagos, the, the animals were free. They were moving about because they knew they was free. But then when he got to the zoo, he would see some of the same animals locked up in cages, behind glass walls, and they couldn't do anything because they weren't free. Same animals, different situation, but they didn't do anything because they weren't free. And so he thought about our Christian walk because so many times Christians don't realize that they've been set free, but they live in a life that's caged. I hope y'all didn't miss that. We already been set free, but we live in a life like we caged up. And that's not how Jesus meant for it to be. God has set us free. Not to go out and sin it up. Yeah. <laughs> don't go out there and turn it up. Oh. Y'all, young people, oh, oh, some of y'all mature folk probably don't understand Amen. what that means, but I know some of the people on this side probably. Y'all probably know what that means, the people on this side. You need the one in the middle, they know what that means. God, <laughs> while, he said, while he set us free, he don't mean for us to go out there and sin it up. Uh -huh. 
if you got Jesus, he got you. You got Jesus, he's got you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, verse 13 says, ye shall die. I got to say that again. If ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, guess what, y'all? We shall live. You got to slay the flesh. You got to stop fooling with two foot. And you got to stop fooling yourself. But oh, look at verse 14. Because verse 14 in chapter 8 is a profound piece of scripture. Because it says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons, and we can insert, and daughters of God. That's some good news right there. That is some good news. We are sons and daughters of God. Because we are in Christ, and Christ is in us. So, so what you mean? You mean that if we follow after the Spirit, we are sons and daughters of the Most High God? Yes, indeed. But the flip side is that you got to check yourself. <laughs> you got to check yourself and make sure that you're right. You got to check yourself and make sure that you're on the right team. Because your refusal to follow the Holy Spirit over and over and over could mean, it could mean, it could mean that you're not in the body of Christ because somewhere, at some point in your walk with Christ, conviction should have set in to compel you to line up with a life that pleases the Holy Spirit. I know that was a lot to say. I know that was a lot to say. But somewhere, after we've confessed yeah. Jesus yeah. as our Savior, yeah. our inner person should have been pricked yeah. to where even if we step out of line just a little bit, yeah. the Holy Spirit yeah. that lives in us yeah. should nurture us and nudge us to get back in line. Yeah. Also, to the point to where we say, Lord, I'm sorry. Yeah. You missed that. That you can go through this life without some repentance. No. You got something coming. Because every knee shall bow. And every tongue must confess that Jesus is Lord. And while we're here, if we are Christians, repentance should be a part of our everyday life. Amen. As humans, we messed around. Oh, I'm sorry, I just skipped skip, skip, skip over something. Let me back up. Uh, we should live life cross-eyed. Why? Because our vision should be more intuitive to spiritual vision rather than natural vision. Amen. Amen. Y'all missed that. We ought to live life cross-eyed because our vision should be more in tune to spiritual things instead of always focusing so much on the natural things. Yes. Yes. Why do I say that? Because we, as human beings, have mastered how to crowd out the Holy Spirit. We, we, we mastered it, Sister Thorne. How to crowd out the Holy Spirit. Because we got so much stuff in our lives. We walk around with more stuff than a junkyard. Most of us should walk through the doors and the theme song from Sanford and Son ought to be playing. Because we got so much junk. As soon as you hit the door, walk, 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 walk. As soon as you hit the door, walk, 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 walk. We got so much spiritual junk that we hold it on to, that we crowded the Holy Spirit almost out of our lives. Yeah. Yeah. It's a bad place. It's a bad place for the church to be. Yeah. Pastor Bruce at the Biltmore Church will be visiting up there some years.
years ago, Pastor Bruce said that the, the church suffers from having 2020 vision or from not having 2020 vision. For some reason, we don't see as clear anymore. We, we got a distorted vision. We cross eyed, but it's the other eye. It's not the eyes that follow the cross. We cross up because we got a lazy eye. And we look around, Sister Green, and we can't seem to get things caught up. And so we, 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 we listen to our own spiritual voice. We listen to our own spiritual guidance, which is fleshly. And the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, is trying to get us to make a spiritual shift towards a life that glorifies God and not us. Ooh, that was deep. The Holy Spirit is trying to get us to see through some spiritual eyes to live a life that glorifies God and not us. And I thank God for his gift of the Holy Spirit because his spirit is our teacher. His spirit is our God. His spirit is our comforter. His spirit is our intercessor. Glory to God for his spirit. So I tell you, let me share what Romans, the 8th chapter, verses 26 through 28, has to say about the spirit as taken from the passion translation of the Bible. So I want you to lean in and listen close. Verse 26, in a similar way, it's from the Passion Translation. Yeah. The Holy Spirit uh -huh. takes hold of us Glory. in our human frailty yeah. to empower us in our weakness. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. deep. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. For example, yeah. at times, uh -huh. we don't even know how to pray right. or know the best things to ask for. Yeah. But the Holy Spirit, watch this, yeah. rises up within us yeah. to super intercede yeah. on our behalf, yeah. leading to God yeah. with emotional signs yeah. and words too deep for us to comprehend. Yeah. 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 He, he, he pleads to God yeah. with emotional signs yeah. and pleads that's too deep yeah. for us to even comprehend. Yeah. But God, God, the searcher of the heart, yeah. knows fully our longings, yeah. yet he also understands the desires of the Spirit okay. because the Holy Spirit, watch this, passionately pleads before God for us. Amen. You should have clapped your hands. Amen. He passionately pleads before God for us. Yeah. He For us, his holy ones. Yeah for a perfect harmony yeah. with God's plan yeah. and our destiny. Amen. Mm. Mm. My God. Yeah. I still got all that jump up in there. Yeah. Still got that jump. Yeah. So, verse 28 says in the Passion Translation, yeah. so we are convinced yeah. that every detail of our lives is continually woven together yeah. to fit into God's perfect plan of bringing good into our lives for we are his lovers who have been called to fulfill his divine and designed purpose. Amen. That, was, that was deep, I know. That was, that was a lot to take in. And I don't know how in the world sometimes we can come to church and still sit in our seat. Maybe that's the reason because we just too involved with the world. How in the world? Maybe that's the reason. We just too involved with the world. Somebody will get it. In order to live life cross-eyed, we get ready to land the plane. Understand that we've been set free from indwelling sin. That God has gifted us his spirit. And the most important and last point, yeah. all this uh -huh. by way of Christ. Well, yeah. Remember I talked about that eraser? Yeah. Pay attention. Yeah. 
as I began this last and final outline yeah. with verse 18, yeah. which is where we launched from. Yeah. Verse 18 reads, yeah. for I reckon, yeah. it's Paul talking, yeah. by way of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. I like this part. Yeah. Yeah. I like this part. You yeah. thought reckon was only a country term. Yeah. Pop probably used to use reckon all the time uh -huh. in, in Georgia. Yeah. Sometimes we use it down here. I reckon so. But Paul says, I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. I don't know about you, but I stopped and I thought about that thing. Uh, Paul, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, basically said, this is a lot for me to ponder. That's probably another country word, too. Uh, it's a lot for me to ponder and think about. I ponder things because such as tribulations and temptations, being unpopular and, and having to go through some sufferings. And, and, and any of us, if truth be told, Sister Ennis, any of us could think on any one of those things. Uh, and we probably experience some of the same life crisis, don't we? Um, we, we've been through some tribulations. Uh, a lot of us have been tempted. Uh, some of us have been unpopular when we were growing up, and especially when you move into the ministry, you become real unpopular. Um, and then a lot of us had to go through some suffering at some time. And so I could imagine that, that just like Paul said, I reckon too, <laughs> that the sufferings and all those things of this present time um, let, let me let me let me stop right there. It's not in my note. When I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that He's done for me, um, when I think about what He's done for me, how He brought me over, how He kept me, how He's seen me through, um, when I think about the goodness of Jesus, my soul ought to stop for a moment, wave my hand. And say hallelujah. Not only do I thank you for saving me, but I thank you because you prepared something else for me that I couldn't prepare for myself. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Any one of us could stop and think on any one of those life crises at any time. So Paul basically says, look at him. I keep it country. Look at him. <laughs> I'm right, I'm right with you. Cornel Georgia, look at him. Um, I had to come to myself and say, self, all of the sufferings in this world, that stuff I went through, the beatings that I took, the scoffing and the laughter that I received when I became a Christian, all that stuff, Sister Helm, means nothing and can't come close yeah. to the glory of God that will someday yeah. be revealed in me. Yeah. And not only me, Paul says, yeah. uh, it's going to be revealed in us. Yeah. Oh, man. I, I, oh, man. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. I, I, I thought about yeah. when I was writing this sermon, yeah. and, and I'm sorry, but when I when I thought about this sermon, yeah. uh, when, rather when I was writing this sermon, um, and it's not in the notes either, but it fell in my spirit again. I thought about my mom. Yeah, I, I did. I, I thought about my mom. Because even though mom is not here with us physically, uh, and I shed some tears like we all have, uh, when I think about where she at now, and where David all is now, and where Johnny is now, and where all our loved ones that have died in Christ is, I think about what Paul said, yeah. it don't even come close down here yeah. yeah. of what I'm going to get to up there. Yeah. Yeah. Don't come close yeah. to what we'll get to yeah. when we get there. Yeah. So he said, look at here, don't worry about all that stuff. We got a glorious destiny. Yeah. Did you hear what I said? Yeah. We got a glorious destiny, sis. Yeah. Uh, we got a glorious destiny uh, that's not built for something down here, yeah. but it's something that sits up high yeah. <laughs> where it wasn't made by hands. Yeah. We got a glorious destiny yeah. that awaits us when we get to glory.
glory. A place that's unlike any other. A building not made by the hands of men, but eternal from on high. And we can bank on this because of what Jesus did for us on the cross. Revealed in Romans chapter 5, verses 6 through 8. For when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Oh, did you hear that? Oh, it was something that we couldn't do for ourselves. That when we were yet without strength, Sister Green, we couldn't even pull our own self up. Come on now. We couldn't pull ourselves up out of a wet paper bag. But when it was due time, Sister Diane, Christ died for the ungodly. And the scripture says, for scarcely will a righteous man die. Uh, will a righteous man, will one die? And I'm looking around, and I love y'all. I'm going to take a good look at you. Because I love you, but I don't think none of you jokers is going to take the bullet for Patrick. I love you, uh, but you'll just be like, well, you go no home. Make it home, Jesus. But none of y'all look like you're going to step in front of a bus and so that I may live and you die. None of you jokers look that way. And I know Sister Monroe, you love me, but you ain't going to do it either. And if truth be told, the insurance policy and say, well, we were born again, and I sure am glad, Lord. I'm missing, but thank you. <laughs> at least I know, Pop, where you at? <laughs> but God committed his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We, I got a problem right there. And talk about these two little words. Wedged in between us and wow. In verse 8. Verse 8 says that, but God committed his love towards us. In that, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. In that means don't get yourself into a fix and walk around this church or your neighborhood or your job thinking that neither you nor I was so good that we didn't need a savior. <laughs> we were in a mess down here and some folk who don't have Christ still in a mess. But I'm so glad in that, <laughs> I'm so glad that in that, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch this. We were in that mess. <laughs> we were in that mess. You got it, didn't you, Sister Green? You. We were in that mess. We were in that bind. We were in that fix. And the scripture says that Christ died for the ungodly. And having said that, we ought to give up us and give into him. We ought to give up us and give into him because we couldn't do anything to save our own nasty selves. That's why we should live like cross-eyed. But we got things twisted up down here because sometimes we want to do our own thing. Don't believe me? Watch this. Yes, it's a disclaimer. I'm going now. Um, if Jesus were but a candidate affiliated with your political party and he was running for office, oh, but better, I'm not just saying that because all of us in here are the same, oh, but better if he were the same 
embraces you. Yeah. Oh, and also had the same political affiliation with you as Jesus was running for office. Y'all work with me, work with me, work with me. Anybody gonna work with me? Work with me. Um, if Jesus were running for office and of the same political party that we are affiliated with and of the same race that we happen to be connected to and of the same views, talking about a, about a, about a figure down here, um, it would be easy for us to gener generate a reason to support the cause of our candidate, Jesus. Stay with me now. Watch what I said. Watch what I said. If he was the same affiliation, if he was the same ethnicity, if he was standing and running with the same views that you had, or you just straight up just like Jesus because he was just cool and had a little swag on him, it would make it easy for us to be a proponent of what Jesus stood for. Um, we go out, we knock on doors, we put flyers out on people's windows and cars and register them to vote. Um, we try to speak some good words because Jesus is the candidate that we want on the ballot. Uh, Y'all stay with me, I don't care, stay with me. Um, we, we try to get all this, we talk freely at the barbershop about our political views of what Jesus stands for. And then some of us, if we're not careful, because Jesus will be uh, affiliated with our political views, and he would have some things that we saw the same way, Sister Tico, and then we probably would be the same ethnicity. Um, we got the nerve that when somebody says something crossed up about our candidate Jesus, we might get angry. Amen. We, 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 I know I knew this part. Babe, I knew this part was going to get everybody quiet. Y'all think I got, y'all think I got something hidden. And no, 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 no. I'm trying to walk with you. I'm trying to get you cross-eyed. I'm trying to share with you. Um, we talk freely about all those political views. We'd invest in t-shirts, post our support all over social media. Go on, baby, tell it. We'd attend rallies across the county. And Lord knows uh, when we hear about our candidate Jesus, coming even close to our area, we'll make plans to take the day off whether or not we got paid for it. I didn't expect not one clap. And I'm okay with that. We will take the day off whether or not we got paid for it uh, because our candidate, Jesus, was coming to town. And I gotta go out and give my support and wave some flags on the corner of Homerton and Ridge and try to get so close that I would be able to take my phone when Jesus came by and give me a selfie so I could post it back on social media. Uh, uh, if Jesus was our political candidate, we'd be doing a whole lot of things just like that. Say I'm wrong. <laughs> we would do a whole lot of things just like that. And the sad thing is that it starts, that, that, that if shots started to ring out in an area where your political candidate was holding his or her rally, they'd be trying to get somewhere safe just like the rest of us. What I mean by that? Jesus, who isn't our political candidate, but our savior, Look death right in the face, and he met it heart on. Oh man, he met it heart on. He didn't have to meet it head on. He met it heart on because he loved us in spite of the mess in that we were in. That's why we should live a life cross out. Because Jesus was not simply running for some pointless political position. He came down and gave his life so that we could have a sure election that we belong to him and we don't have to worry about the recount. Cross out. So I close with not my words. But words from Romans.
Romans the chapter, uh, Romans 8 chapter. Right. And I truly hope yeah. that Pastor Diane's awesome sermon on last Sunday yeah. out of this same book. And this sermon today yeah. has you thinking hard about your life yeah. and God's desire for you and I yeah. to give not only our hearts, yeah. but our minds, right. our bodies, right. and our lives yeah. completely to him yeah. and to be focused solely yeah. on him yeah. throughout the remainder of our lives yeah. here on earth. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. So I close yeah. by starting at verse 31 yeah. in chapter 8. Yeah. It's one of those that gets right to me. Gets down to my core well, because I start thinking about what Jesus well, yeah. did for little old me. Yeah. And it says, What shall yeah. we say uh -huh. to these things? Yeah. <laughs> if God be for us, yeah. who Ooh. can be against yeah. us? Right. If God be for us, yeah. who yeah. can be against us? Yeah. He that spared yeah. not his own son. But delivered him for us up all, how shall he not we not with him also freely give us all things? Oh, that's deep. God already gave us Jesus. He gave us eternal life to go right along with him. He gave us a comforter in the form of his spirit. Gave us a teacher. And when it comes to temptation, he even gave us a way of escape. Thank you, Jesus. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's and God's elect? Yes. In other words, who got nerve enough to say that we guilty? Yes. God done already yes. given us his son, yes. and he freed us up. <clears throat> Is it God, or rather, who shall lay anything to God to charge of God's elect? Yes. It is God that does the justify. Yes. You can't justify nothing for me. God that already justified it. Amen. Who is he that condemned it? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather that he is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God. Who also maketh intercession for us. Oh, and this is the part that gets me all round up. Because Jesus is petitioning God on the right hand of the Father. In other words, when we go to God in prayer, uh -huh. if Jesus is on the inside, yeah. that's when God looks down at our hearts. Oh, and he says, oh, my son yeah. is in sister so-and-so. Yeah. My son yeah. is in the heart of brother so-and-so. And, and because yeah. you got my son, yeah. you got access to all of the blessings. Yeah. Oh, you missed a good time to shout out. Yeah. In other words, let me, let me bring it back to you. When God looks at us yeah. and we are petitioning yeah. to God yeah. in the name of the name Jesus. Of right. And we want that blessing. Yeah. Uh, God, Ebony, yeah. may look down and see yeah. that you needed that job. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And, yeah. and he said, Jesus, yeah. because Ebony has my son, yeah. she could also have the job. Yeah. <laughs> and because you got this Jesus on the inside of you, yeah. you can have access yeah. to the blessings that I have from the kingdom from down to earth. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying, and, 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 and who shall yeah. separate us from the love of Christ? Yeah. Shall tribulation? No, no. 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 Or distress? No. Uh -uh. Yeah. Shall persecution? No. Or famine? or nakedness, no. or peril, no. or sword, no. cross I, no. because as it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. But this thing, not Robert's slaughter, not Linda's slaughter, not used to be Cassandra's slaughter, but we are counted for sheep for the slaughter. That means when the enemy yeah. comes up on us, yeah. and he's gonna come up on us, yeah. he wanna take us out, yeah. chop our heads off, yeah. cut us into little small pieces. Yeah. But nay, yeah. we are more yeah. than conquerors. Yeah. We 
are more than conquerors. We are more than conquerors. Through him that loved us, we are cross out. And because we're cross out, I am persuaded that neither death nor life Neither height, yeah. nor depth, yeah. nor any other. Yeah. None of y'all, yeah. none of your parents, yeah. none of my enemies, yeah. nobody in my job, yeah. nobody in my neighborhood yeah. will be able yeah. to separate me yeah. from the love yeah. of God, yeah. which is in Christ Jesus, yeah. our Lord. Yeah. We ought to pray him because yeah. Jesus yeah. did his work on the cross. And because of that, I'm going to be cross-eyed. I'm looking up, holding on, thinking about walking, running, marching, moving, praising for the cross. Thank you, Jesus, for being cross-eyed. I'm going to live my life cross-eyed. I'm going to live my life cross-eyed because Jesus Cross out. 